Let's learn the popular JavaScript framework called React. Hello everyone, my name is Devin, this is Quick Programming. Let's learn a little bit of React.js. So the first thing that you'll notice is I have Visual Studio open. You can get the Community Edition for free on visualstudio.com. And I'm going to create an ASP.NET web application. There's actually templates to create Node.js based React applications, but I'm a .NET person, so I like doing the ASP.NET app. I'm going to name my application my app, just to keep it simple. I'm going to create an MVC application with this, and I'm going to remove the individual user accounts. I don't need any authentication. I'm not going to host in the cloud. I'm just going to run it locally. So now the application is fully created. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And the first thing that I have to do is add the React.js NuGet package. So I'm going to right click on my project name and then go to manage NuGet packages. In the browse, I'm going to type in react.js. And the first result is by Facebook, and that's the one that you want. So go ahead and install it. This is going to be a very simple application, just so you know. I'm in the index.cshtml class for the home controller. I'm going to go ahead and remove all this stuff and the Jumbotron. You can see that Bootstrap is in here. It's part of the MVC framework. They can live side by side. They don't necessarily always play well together, React and Bootstrap. Now that I have a basic HTML class, I'm going to go ahead and give this div an ID. And I'm going to call the ID my app. You can definitely name it whatever you want. The reason why I'm calling it my app is I want all of my React.js stuff to live inside of this div. So it's essentially my application. The next thing that we're going to do is go into the scripts directory and then open up React. We need to add the DOM and the React JavaScript files. The first one that you want to add is the React.js, and then you can add the React DOM. And that is it for the React specific class. The next thing that we're going to do is create a JSX file. You can write React in JavaScript, it's just much more complicated, so, so most developers use JSX, which is a JavaScript file that enables us to implement HTML type syntax inside JavaScript. So I right clicked on my scripts, I went to add, and now I'm going to create a new JSX file. I'm going to call this, it doesn't matter, I'm going to call it my app as well. There's no significance between this name and this ID though, so don't be confused. And the very last thing that we have to do to get this all situated is JSX files uh, need to be compiled. So I have this web compiler. You can just hit the compile file and what it'll do is it'll add that file to the list of compiled items. So every time you compile your code, it'll compile this file again back into JavaScript. So we can see that it's it's empty except for use stripped. I'm going to go ahead and copy this over into here. Don't copy the JSX file. You could technically, but I never do. I just copy over the JavaScript file. All right, let's get into actually building the React application. The first thing that we're going to do is create a class. Okay, so what I have here is a class called my app class, and inside of that class is one method, and it's called render. And that function just returns a div that has a paragraph inside of it with some text. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward. However, if you run this right now, nothing's actually going to show. And that's because we have to somehow tie this class to this ID. So the next thing that we're going to do is call the reactdom.render method. And you'll notice I'm going to call the class name that I created above like it's HTML. And then I just reference the ID that we created in the HTML file. And now we're done. That's That right there is a simple, very simple React.js application. I hit Control F5 and it's going to run and we're going to see the result. So the application is up and you can see testing123 testing is now up on the screen. It's just a paragraph on the screen. If you look at the, the page source, you can see that there's a, a div with an ID of my app and then inside of that is a paragraph with testing123 testing in there. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, maybe a little too simple and straightforward, 
but technically you could build more classes and you could put those classes inside of this app class and you can nest the classes that way to build up a, a full UI experience. So let's go ahead and do that just to show how it's done. So I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it my face. Inside this class, I'm only going to have one function as well, and I'm going to, it has to be render. Every React.js class has to implement render, and this function is going to return another div. And I'm going to make this super simple, so I'm going to say, and say, inner class. So there we go. Now we have two classes, and then they're being returned, well, the myApp class is being returned to the myApp ID in the CSHTML. However, this MyFace class isn't yet. So now that we have another class, let's go ahead and implement it. You'll once again reference the class name like it's an HTML tag. There you go. Now you can see that the application has this inner class h1 tag in it. And you can see that the React DOM.render only returns one object right here.